It's a great joy to uh, welcome everyone to this webinar on Mauritian aromatherapy with uh, Dr. Nadine Thomas, the head of the department of Mauritian aromatherapy of the Maharishi College of Perfect Health International. It's very appropriate in these times to have this webinar with aromatherapy, which is a very powerful tool in Mahashi's Vedic approach to health. Before I give over to Dr. Nadine, I just wanted to show a overview chart of the different approaches in Mahashi Ayurveda. This chart gives an overview of all the different approaches. It's called Total Knowledge of Health and shows the multimodality approach of Mahashi Ayurveda, covering the whole range of natural law, balancing all levels of health. So on the left side, we have the different levels of health, from the environment to society, behavior, body, mind, and at the basis, pure being, the unified field of all the laws of nature. And on the right side, we have the different preventive and therapeutic modalities, Vedic Astrology, Jyotish and Yagya, Public Health and World Peace, Yogic Flying in Groups, Vedic Architecture, Stapatya Veda, Vedic Organic Agriculture, and then the different aspects of Ayurveda, daily and seasonal routines, Dinacharya and Ritucharya, diet and herbal therapy, Dravya Guna, Ayurvedic rejuvenation therapy, Rasayanas, Ayurvedic massage therapy, Abhyanga and Marma, then the purification therapies, Panchakarma, yoga therapy, yoga asanas and pranayama, and then the use of all the five senses, Vedic aroma therapy, light therapy with gems, color therapy, sound and music therapy, Mahashi Vedic Sound Therapy, Mahashi Vedic Vibration Therapy and Gandharva Veda, and then a direct replication of Maharaja's discovery, the model of Vedic physiology, and then of course, the Transcendental Meditation and the DMCT program. And the goal of all these different approaches is to achieve a state of swastya. It means to be established in oneself, the state of perfect health transcendental consciousness. And all these different approaches aim to restore the connection between the body and its source in consciousness. And one aspect we want to discuss this evening more in detail, and this is the aspect to create balance in mind and body through the use of essential oils in Marishi aromatherapy. I want now to hand over to Nadine that she starts this webinar. Okay. So thank you, thank you so much, Dr. Walter. I'm so happy to be with all of you tonight. I am just doing a presentation on how the essential oils can actually uh, help us on our way to enlightenment whatever are the events around us, whatever is the situation. And so this is what we will uh, be starting now. So uh, I have, I start with a PowerPoint. So Marishi, Aroma, Marishi Aromatherapy for Enlightenment, we will see Invincibility and Immunity. So, Marishi Aromatherapy for Enlightenment. In this presentation, we are going to talk about enlightenment, how to handle disturbances which might arise on the path to enlightenment, and how essential oils can help us to maintain a steady, peaceful path toward enlightenment. What is enlightenment? So this is what we see first. It is a state of invincibility, a state of perfect health and happiness, 
a state of perfect order, coherence, and harmony, a life when we are living in tune with all the laws of nature. It is a state of inner peace, self-contentment, when there is no mistake, no misery, no fear, no enemies, no disease. Tat Sanidao by Irat Yaga, in the vicinity of yoga, hostile tendency are eliminated. This is a Yoga Sutra 235. Recently, the world was experiencing some turbulences. Marie Chisset, in 1992, in order to establish order, disorder has to be shaken. And for shaking to remain under control, we, who are at the basis, at the level of para, have to be para, that is, unreachable by the surface turmoil. So we have to be very steady. We have to be very careful not to get upset by little or big things. And if we lose our basis, our dignity, the first transition will take much longer. Don't give importance to things which may upset us. This is a very precious time for the world. Everything depends on how our awareness is. Just don't let it be shaken. Our awareness is the basis of, sisters, of all those transformations. More than ever before, time demands we remain completely ourselves. It is a very tender, delicate time for us. We should not become angry or sad. We should just look, we should just be like an ocean. The evolutionary power is waking up. We shake it, then after some time, shake it again. We shake it, then leave it, then after some time, shake it again. Each time, a new level of purity, awakening is added. Here is the first point. Enlightenment is a state of perfect health and happiness. Turbulences might arise in the path to enlightenment. The way to handhold them is to remain steady, unshakable, like the ocean. Mar Acharam recently gave us some beautiful guidelines on how to handle this world situation and how to re-establish coherence. And so our focus is on both levels, consciousness and physiology. Consciousness. Our focus is to transcend, to go inward. This is for our own well-being and for maintaining the world consciousness on a very high level. We use this time of retreat to go back to the self to be more established in silence, to maintain our good routine, applying all Maharishi's teaching. We add the guidelines from Maharajaram, which are rounding with longer programs, more asana, exercising, and this is also a time for knowledge, to deepen our, uh, our experiences during meditation. We just see about the consciousness. Now we'll see about the physiology. Our progress toward enlightenment depends on our good health. It is very important in this time to apply all the guidelines received from the government of our countries and that we follow all the Marishi Ayurved guidelines from our health minister Dr. Rainer Pischer and Dr. Walter Molk. Marishi Ayurved tells us how important it is to strengthen our immune system, which is our invincibility. So from the point of view of Marishi Ayurved, 
Il m'enrichit à your bed. Au chasse, is considered to be our immunity. Immunity means power, resistance to any disease, invincibility. At the basis of a strong immune system, we need a strong digestive system. Strong digestive system will provide OJAS and seizes our immunity. Strong immune system give us resistance to any disease. This is our invincibility. This is perfect health and happiness, invincibility and enlightenment. So a main point to handle any disturbance on the path towards enlightenment, we focus on our inward state of life and we take care of our physical health by following Marishi's Ayurveda principle. Now we'll see the role of Marishi aromatherapy in general and mostly in today's world situation. So we are at the point of Marishi aromatherapy. We have seen that uh, we, we spoke a little bit about enlightenment. Then we spoke about Marishi Ayurveda. What was important in this time was to follow the the guideline of Marisha Ayurved and that it was uh, very important to strengthen our immunity. And so now we start to see how Marisha Aromatherapy is going to help us. So Marisha Aromatherapy is unique because it is based on consciousness and it has on the principle of Marisha Ayurved. The essential oils that we use, they create bliss. And we have just seen that in order to have a strong immune system, we need ojas. And ojas is that quality of bliss. And the essential oil is what they do. The fragrances stimulate the release of neurotransmitters, some messenger substances. For example, endorphin and serotonin, which generate feelings of happiness, well-being and, and joy. So the essential oil, they balance our dosha, the three fundamental pillars of our physiology. They restore wholeness and balance our body, mind and emotions in a very easy, pleasant, yet profound way. They enliven our body's own self-healing mechanism. They refine our physiology. They help us to progress toward higher state of consciousness. And they give us more self-contentment, clearer mind and better health. Today we will see which essential oils can, in a very holistic way, support our meditation strengthen our digestive system and enhance ojas, bring peace of mind to eliminate fear and bring inner contentment, strengthen the immune system, invincibility, no diseases, and strengthen the respiratory system, flu and cold. So the essential oils to support our meditation, so there is many, many essential oils for many different purposes, but I choose just a few examples. If you are using something else and you are very happy, that's fine. So here I choose sandalwood, frankincense and myrrh. They help us to regain the memory of our divine nature, our cosmic nature, our normal state of perfect health and happiness. Sandalwood is actually cooling the mind. So if you apply a little bit of sandalwood on your forehead just before meditation, then all the thinking process that you have just before will vanish and you will be able to transcend peacefully. I heard that some people in the outside world, uh, medita even meditator, they feel that it was a little bit difficult to uh, meditate because there are so many thoughts about the uh, situation. 
So sandalwood is very good. Tell all your friends to put on the forehead. Frankincense, it's slowing down the breathing system, meaning that we breathe more slowly. And this, uh, as a natural uh, phenomena, will just help us to settle down. And then near, it's a very, very, very uh, settling essential oil. That's just three examples. Hmm? Here you have a beautiful picture of the myrrh, the myrrh tree. This is, and when we extract, we get the resin. And this is what we distill and we get the essential oil. Beautiful. And here, also, so that was for meditation. We have also seen that we wanted essential oil to strengthen our digestive system. When we digest properly, then we all what we have been eating is transformed in a very, uh, very, very refined substance, as we say, ojas. And this ojas is what is helping us to be in perfect health. We, did, we say that it was related to uh, immunity. So we need a good digestive system. And a good digestive system means that we have to enhance the power of the digestive system and make sure that we have a good quality of everything that we eat. So I choose coriander. Coriander is a very good essential oil to maintain a good digestion for everyone, for every dosha, whether it's vata, pita, or kapha, could take a little bit of two, three drops of coriander with um, half a teaspoon, uh, with your first uh, spoon of your meal, lunch and supper. So you put two, three drops in your spoon with your rice or your dal, and you just eat it. And this will maintain our uh, digestive power in good quality. Now, of course, if you have a weak digestive system or something too agitated, we will need some other essential oil. But today, it's just a general uh, introduction. So here you have some field with coriander, also beautiful plants, smell delicious. Now, we need a good sleep. Everything is related together. To have a good digestion, we need a good sleep. To sleep well, we need a good digestion. So everything goes all together. So the essential oil for a good sleep could be vetiver. You could apply vetiver on the sole of the feet, spikenard on the forehead, mandarin. If you, if you want mandarin, you could put on the forearm. You don't have to put all of them. Eh? I'm just giving you some example here. Mandarin on the inside, on your forehead, the inside. And marjoram, you could uh, apply it on around your navel. Those essential oils, they are very good to pacify vata. There are just a few of them. There are many other, but just... Uh, to give some example. So they pacify the vata, they help us to have a good sleep, and then in the morning we have a very good meditation. And then when we have a very good meditation, the whole day goes by itself. We take the right decision, we have a good meal, we have a good activity. Here, some uh, mandarin, beautiful also. And then here is a marjoram, very delicate little leaves. Because we don't have the essential oil to smell them, then I thought I'd put you a few pictures. At some time we will meet and we will breathe them. <laughs> so here are the essential oils to enhance ojas. We might think that any essential oil which sweet fragrances, such as Rose, jasmine, sandalwood, neroli, ilang ilang will create ojas. This is true, but in fact, 
it is a, any essential oil that balances our state of body, mind, and emotion will create ochas. For example, if someone has a cold, he won't like necessarily rose or sandalwood at that time, but he would like Ravin Sarah because Ravin Sarah will clear his cold and therefore we will store balance, joy, energy in his life. Ravin Sarah might not be considered as a specific ojas enhancing an essential oil, but it is in this case, balancing the imbalance, bringing back ojas. So there are different perspectives to the enhancement of ojas. So many possibilities. It's a field of all possibilities. <laughs> so here is our main point. By supporting our meditation, our sleep, our digestion, the essential oil strengthen our immune system and help us to become resistant to any possible threatening stimuli. Let's see how the essential oil works. The plants, the trees, the flowers contain chemical compounds which have powerful therapeutic properties. Through different processes of extraction, mainly distillation and cold press, we obtain essential oils and essences that in turn have these therapeutic properties. Each essential oil has many different chemical compounds. So we are going to look at some of them. It is important to know the chemical compound, and we will see why. So here is a list of some of the most important. The monoterpene ketone, the ether, the coumarine, the ester, the aldehyde, and also the sesquiterpen, the sesquiterpen aldehyde, the monoterpen aldehyde, the oxide. If you are not familiar, it could look a little bit overwhelming, but when you start to use them after a few days, it is really fascinating. By knowing more and more the, the chemical compound of the plants, not forgetting the beauty and their fragrance, but going into, is like going into the uh, fibers of immortality. And it is so extraordinarily fascinating. So that's a list. And now let's take the example of the monoterpene. You will see why. Monoterpene is one class of chemical compounds. And they have some properties. Each chemical compound has some very, very specific property, as I say. And so because of this property, then we, could, we know in which case to use them. If they are mucolytic, we will use them in the case someone has some bronchitis or things like that. Now, let's see what are the properties of the monoterpene on the physical uh, what are their physical effects? So the monoterpene are found mainly in the skin of the citrus fruits, orange, lemon, grapefruits, bergamot, and also in the leaves of the conifers, all our beautiful trees in the forest, the pine, the fir, they are, so they are full of monoterpenes. And here are the properties of the monoterpene. They are very good room disinfectant. So you immediately know that you could use any of the conifer or citrus fruit to disinfect your room. They decongest the respiratory tract and ensure free breathing and energy flow. They protect from virus and bacteria. They have a strong cortisone-like effect. They, they are enlivening and stimulating, and they improve the lymph flow and the blood circulation. So in our case for today, they are very important because we need some oil 
that are disinfecting the room, that are uh, protecting us against the virus, and that are also very good for our respiratory tract. So oils, essential oils with monoterpene is something you have to have in your mind, and it means the citrus fruits and the conifer. On the level of, psycho of psychological and energetic effect, the monoterpene, they release anxieties, which is also very important for the people in the world who are in fear. They give strength, courage, and trust in order to be able to cope with the uncertainties of life. So now for each essential, each chemical compound, there is some precaution. So I just add here the safety data of the monoterpene. They are very good to use, very simple to use, nothing threatening, but sometimes they could be a little bit skin irritating. So we will always uh, try them and dilute them first to see how we react when we apply them on our uh, body. So where do we find mostly monoterpene in which essential oil? 75% of monoterpene in the Cyprus, in the fur, the glass fur, in the juniper, frankincense, bergamot, black and white spruce, black spruce and white spruce, marjoram, angelica, orange sweet, orange bitter, grapefruit, silver fir, basil fir, lemon, in the rind, the rind. So that was an for, uh, a few examples. Huh? There is some many, many more. Let's take an example now of the, uh, an essential oil that contains monoterpene. So we have seen first that all the essential oil contain many chemical compounds that have different properties and due to those properties, we will be able to address specific uh, health concerns. And we have taken the example of monoterpene to uh, discuss what are the properties of the monoterpene. And now we take the example of pine sylvester to see how we could use any of these essential oil. And by taking this example, it will give us an idea. So pine sylvester, here is what it contains. The, the chemical compounds that pine sylvester contains are monoterpene in yellow. So you see, he has a lot. And he has also sesquiterpene, sesquiterpenol, ester, and monoterpenol. By knowing the quality of all of those chemicals, you could know exactly when you want to use the pine sylvester. So the pines. The pines are the oldest aromatic energy on earth. Isn't it beautiful? Mainly, they are mainly linked to the oxygenation of our planet. This is why pine is traditionally used to detoxify and strengthen the mucous membranes of the lungs, the bronchi, and the sinuses. I find it so extraordinary to be related with the cosmos, with the universe, you know. We are in a in our hand a little bottle of essential oil, but in fact, this little bottle is just the essential oil from that big tree that live in big forest, that is making, giving the energy to the, the wall of the universe. And so us from our side, we could use it to strengthen our lungs, our respiratory system, which is so there's something we want. So pine sylvester, for this point of view, is something that we should keep in mind. 
In line with its energetic effect, pine oil is psychologically fortifying, invigorating our vital spirit. Pine oil opens breathing, instills positivity, and helps to restore self-confidence, courage, and willpower. A pine tree represents an ancient power to lean on and to get strong. So everyone who is feeling a little anxious or very anxious, then by breathing, by smelling the pine sylvester, we put a few drops on a tissue paper or handkerchief uh, if you don't have a diffuser and you breathe it several times during the day. You are immediately transformed. Like if there is some anxiety or fear, immediately it brings you, you to a totally different, uh, different world. The pine sylvester we have seen in our uh, yellow circle has also a good uh, number of esters. And the ester quality is to be balancing and relaxing. So it is extremely effective in removing mental fatigue, nervous exhaustion and stress, and it improves concentration and memory. It is very comforting for vata. It reduces vata. All the conifers have the same quality that when you go in a forest, you feel immediately released from the outside world or your thinking or anything. It decreases vata because it is comforting. Here, you see, no more stress. <laughs> right. Main point, essential oil contain, so we have just seen that the essential oil contain many chemical compounds which have very specific properties. Knowing these properties, allow us to select and use the proper essential oils for any health concern. Let's see an example of formula for strengthening the immune system in case of virus. Essential oil for immunity. Essential oil have been shown to increase the power of lymphocytes, making them better able to eliminate foreign invaders in the body, such as viruses and bacteria. The, the essential oil can also increase the speed at which the immune, immune system produces antibodies to eliminate an infection. Using one or more oils, topically, they are easily absorbed through the skin or in a diffuser on a day-to-day -day basis can support this effect. It is very important before choosing your essential oils to follow the precautions attributed to each of them. Some chemical compounds are very strong and could be damaging if we do not follow the correct dose, meaning the number of days we can use the essential oils and in which quantity. Some essential oils, you could use them daily, no, no, no problem like lavender, geranium, orange, all those essential oil, very gentle, powerful, but no uh, problem. Some <coughs> other essential oil who contain very strong uh, chemical compounds, then you could use them in, in case of crisis. Suddenly you feel that you are getting the flu or a cold, so you could take some thyme, thyme oil, or, which is a phenol and very, very strong, but you will not use it more than five days. After five days, the problem should be solved. But if it is not, because you have carried on your life running about and eating and also seeing, then you will move to a different essential oil that will continue uh, the effect of the time-time all. Time-time all 
can, it's a very, very good for the virus, but if you use too long time, then it could be damaging for the liver. So that's why it's very important to uh, be careful with each precaution. Hmm. So here are some suggestions of essential oils that can be used for strengthening our immune system, protecting us against virus, and for room air disinfection. Veda Roma has a ready-made blend. You probably have all received the description of this blend and with all the precautions how to use it. It's called the Pancha Pandavas which is very effective, but needs some great attention in terms of dosage, as I was saying before. This blend is made of several essential oils containing phenol called the dynamics of aromatherapy. Read carefully the instruction before using them. They are very great. Did everyone receive this uh, document that uh, Veda Aroma uh, team uh, made so beautiful and sent me and I have sent to to Meru course office I think a community office huh? if you did not receive it let let us know we will send it to you it's very important that you use this pancha pandavas and to know how to use it some of the essential oil could also do uh, uh, could also help us with the immune system, the virus, and uh, as a room air disinfectant. So we could, uh, I'm going to give you just a the name of a few of them. You could use them in a diffuser or, and topically, applying six drops in 30 milliliters of sesame oil or jojoba for chest and upper back rub. So Ravin Sara, very good. Bel Aurel, time to Janol. So make sure you see the different time to Janol is different than time Timol. So those essential oils are highly effective for viral and bacterial infection and weak immune system. You can breathe them several times a day and you can apply them, so each of them, not the three at the same time, not the three together, you have the choice. You apply them on the chest and on the upper back to cover the, and that you do several times during the day. You, feel, you will feel very, very good at the end of the day, but continue several days. We have also lemongrass, very effective against viruses, and it is strengthening for the immune system, very helpful for room air disinfection. It is antibacterial, antiviral, strong uh, immune stimulant, and it is refreshing, revitalizing. Alternative oils, you could use citronella grass and eucalyptus citriodora. Fur silver, excellent room disinfectant for flu uh, prevention. Combined with citrus oils, it can reduce germs significantly. Also, as a part of a body oil mixture, it will improve the general condition if feeling weak. So strongly antiviral, antibacterial, and uh, immune stimulant. Alterna alternative oils, all the citrus oils. Cinnamon leaf, it's a strong antiviral, antiviral and it has a at the same time it helps strengthening the immune system like the, the, the one before. Antiviral, antibacterial, a broad spectrum of action stimulating, invigorating, encouraging. The alternative oil could be cinnamon bark, bell laurel, clove bud. 
So those oil, cinnamon, bellorel, uh, cinnamon and clove bud, you have to do really uh, careful with the precaution when you apply them. They could be dermocaustic, so you have to dis di dilute them. So here is our main point. There are many essential oils that uh, can help us to balance our physiology and to prevent and address many health concerns. Also, aromatherapy is a natural medicine. It is very important to have some basic knowledge on how to use them to have maximum results. And here is our unity chart. Marichi aromatherapy provides an effective means to prevent and help any health concerns. By becoming healthy, balanced, and happy, each of us contributes to establish world peace. Unity consciousness. Marichi aromatherapy supports enlightenment and heaven on earth for all. It allows us to perceive the flow of pure consciousness within our physiology, to perceive unity within diversity. Maharaja says, this time will pass and soon we will enjoy a better world. Marishi says, the future is bright and this is my delight. Chez Gurudev. So now I think we could unmute and have some questions if you want. Uh, am I with everyone now? Yes, everyone is very impressed by your presentation. So they just need a moment to <laughs> formulate their questions, I think. Okay, that's fine. I, I'm totally fine. If there is no question, that's fine. We could uh, just breathe it. <laughs> I hope you are all aware of your little bottle with you. I'm breathing Bellorel. It's a nice, uh, nice oil, and, but whatever you choose will be fine. Oh yes, one thing I wanted to tell you more, uh, which is very exciting. Yesterday I received an email from uh, one of our mother of the domain from Lebanon, uh, Suzanne, uh, Dr. Suzanne Hamsa. And she gave me all his encyclopedia of uh, interview from medical doctors, aromatherapists from France, who are starting to speak about essential oil with coronavirus. Not only so the one from France who are very well known, there is a chemist, uh, Francom, who so uh, many years ago has uh, discovered, I mean, the coronavirus that exists now uh, belong to a family. And this family was already enlivened five years ago, according to Francom. And Dr. Francom was find the essential oil that was able to uh, cure this, uh, this thing. One of them was Bellorel, the other one, I mean, if you are interested, I will send you. And so uh, now, those doctors like uh, Francom and also uh, the uh, uh, surgeon that the human, humanitarian uh, doctor who has been traveling all over the world was cured many, many people, thousands of people with essential oil and find the precise formula to relieve, like when he was in Africa and all that, to release also uh, the, the virus that was at that time. They are gathering together and they did not speak so far because they feel that they know the essential oil almost, but they have to make sure that, I mean, they want to bring something uh, more specific, probably. I have not had the time to read. There is pages of interview. 
but which seem so from yesterday I received them I have just had the time to read a little of it and it gives so much hope Can I just ask a question I yes 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 Hi, Nadine um, about frankincense yeah and myrrh can you tell us how to apply those so uh, in which uh, context you want before wow. meditation yeah yes so frankincense and myrrh you could uh, i put the three of them frankincense sandalwood and myrrh on the forehead so myrrh could be a little bit sometimes it is liquid Sometimes, I don't know if some of you notice, it is a little bit thick. So if it is a little thick, it could be a little uh, sticky. So in that way, you will put a little bit of some fat, uh, something on your forehead, like a little bit of jojoba or a little bit of cream. And then you will apply your uh, myrrh and then a little bit of sandalwood and frankincense. The frankincense, you could put it, you don't need to put the three of them. You could put just one and see which one responds the most for you. I find myself very, very good with sandalwood. There is something very special that I like in sandalwood and I put just come to, ah, no, not come, but if you have somewhere where you could smell them, then you need to see which one you feel the best with it, which one your physiology reacts the best. The frankincense you could put in your diffuser, if you have one diffuser, and you could put it five, ten minutes before you start your program. And then when you start your program, you switch off. So if there is any noise with the... Uh, uh, the diffuser in case there is, and you don't have even that, and you have this, the fragrance of the frankincense. Frankincense could be a little warming, like if someone has a little bit of uh, pita, it might feel not so comfortable that with myrrh and sandalwood, which are both, uh, I mean, myrrh is very uh, good for the tridosha, Sandalwood also, but very cooling for the mind. And frankincense has this quality of being a little. Some of us find that it could be a little heating, but just try it. So just like that, you, uh, just before meditation on your forehead. Thank you very much. Yes, you're welcome. I'm glad you are here. <laughs> uh, Nadine, <laughs> this is Emily again. Yes, that's um, right. And having not heard it, I hope I'm not, um, I'm probably asking something you've answered. Um, did you distinguish between what oils are preventative and what oils are cure, curing? In other words, once you have symptoms, uh, you, you use these oils, but to, you use other oils to prevent. Have you made that distinction? I or? did not make uh, the decision. I was actually speaking about prevention but uh, pre when I say prevention, it means like it is something that uh, f to strengthen the physiology and for the respiratory system and like that, you could use all the uh, essential oil I have been speaking about, like monoterpene, uh, the citrus, the, um, the conifer, all those oils. You can just use them daily. You, there is, you have no problem, but you know that there is this situation around us. So then you use the essential oil daily, one of mm -hmm. those. And mm -hmm. then, but now, if you feel that you have a feeling like a flu is coming, or yeah. you feel a little weak, or there is a cold, it does not mean that it is corona. But I have go given the formula how to actually uh, use as soon as you feel that you have uh, the, the beginning of a flu or there is a cold, mm. then you could take, I don't know, actually I did not say that, but what you could do if you, if you feel the first sign of the flu of a, or a cold, if you feel comfortable to take the essential oil 
internally, mm -hmm. then you could take some time thymol. Mm -hmm. uh, you could take uh, two drops with uh, a little bit of honey and you mm -hmm. will take it uh, the morning when you wake up or at any time you feel that uh, uh, weakening coming, then you could take it and you could do it two, three times during the day. But uh, for some people, no more than three days. In your mm -hmm. case, I will say no more than three days. Some okay. of the people, maybe four or five days. And then you could, at the same time, you could put that essential oil on the sole of your feet. And you do it also two, three times during the day. You could dilute it a little bit to make sure that it does not irritate mm -hmm. uh, the sole of your feet. Uh, thank, thank you very much. I don't know if you repeated that, but I no, 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 I did not say. Um, uh, but there is also uh, the uh, Pancha Pandavas. If any of you have received uh, that document, you should read it carefully because there is a, the, a lot of information there and how, how to use it mm -hmm. when as prevention and if something starts in Very that good. direction of flu or cold. Very good. Thank you so much. Yes, you're welcome. All right. So is there, if there is no other question, I think we should uh, start to, to, to keep in tune with our routine. We go to bed early before 10. And then the tomorrow morning, we wake up very early and we have a very good program. And we use the essential oil we have. And you know that there is a system now that you could actually get the essential oil. I suppose everybody has received the way that you could get the essential oils from the, uh, from the capital. Uh, you sent an email to a customer office at vedaroma.com. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure if that is the address. If someone has the address, could you please remind me? <laughs> I always use it, but I forget. And then you say which oil you want, and then the essential oil will be delivered to the um, to uh, Meru uh, the guards. <laughs> then you could you could get it there or find someone who can bring it to you. So there is a system, everything is nicely written and you probably has received that procedure. If not, please write to me and I will send it to you. All right, it's hard to leave you, but we have to do it. So oh, thank you very I, much. Yeah, very good, uh, beautiful. That was really that was lovely. Thank you. Thank you to all of you. It was very nice to be with all of you and thank you for bringing mm -hmm. this uh, subject and we'll, we'll stay all together, very healthy, very happy. So you remember, very yes. <laughs> breathing our essential oil, bring a lot of bliss and this is what we want. We never just feel down. <laughs> if we feel down, we breathe it. Thank you, Dad. Thank you very much, Nadine. Shagurudev. Shagurudev. Shagurudev.